Oh, there. Are we live? Lovely. Um, see from here. Here's a screen button. Screen share. Cool. So let me just throw it here. All right. Great. Well, uh, hi there. So my name is Ryan Noble. I work at Chainsafe as a software engineer. And today I'm going to be going through our gaming SDK. So just a, a quick primer, obviously. Uh, my, I've been working in the space since about 2018. Started as an educator back then. And I then moved on to working in like the DeFi space for a little bit, you know, token economics and uh, that sort of jazz, but then I started doing more gap development for quite a while. And yeah, then I joined Chainsafe in 2020 and been working on a variety of projects since. And then when we got our hands on the gaming SDK, um, I spend too much of my time as a gamer in, in my normal life. So I thought I might as well do it for work. So just a quick overview of what Chainsafe is. So we're like a team that was fostered by a bunch of developers that just wanted to build stuff. And yeah, we sort of bootstrapped our way into what we are today. Uh, we work on basically anything blockchain related. So we'll build out entire nodes. We will rewrite entire SDKs and nodes in different languages. We uh, do like contract audits. We do like interoperability and layer two uh, sort of stuff. We will work on Functionally, anything that makes Web3 sort of grow and move forward. So that's how we ended up with the gaming SDK. We became the custodians of it. Um, the, uh, the original creator of the app was a man named Leon Doe. And it was built out of necessity because he wanted to work on multiple chains, develop quickly, build some games. and he came up with a way to give us the same amount of features we usually expect when trying to like inter interact with smart contracts and such. So that's how we got to the actual SDK. Uh, it's known as Web3 Unity. You can find it on GitHub. And we're also on the Unity store now. Um, and fu fundamentally, it gives you read and write access to any EVM style chain right now in Unity. So we've got it working for WebGL as well as native builds. And the main thing we're working on right now is stabilizing uh, all of our calls. So we're actually expanding our feature set quite a bit. In fact, uh, recently we just got a IPFS module added uh, and I'll show you the uh, service we have for that uh, at the end if we have time. But yeah, if you wanna le learn a lot more about it, get all the technical nitty gritties, you can go over to uh, gaming.chainsafe, or you can just drop into our Discord and you know, ask, some, ask some questions. There's an entire section just for gaming. And if you're tinkering around with it, you can just come and ask your questions, and we will be there to help you along. So uh, what we allow you to do is we've been working on integrating NFTs. So we have uh, graph queries for getting like people's balances. We have uh, you can launch arbitrary graph queries. Uh, we also have signing messages and logging in and the usual sort of authentication you would expect. So we got that working for WebGL pretty quickly. And there were a couple of niggles trying to get it to work on native just because of permissions and that sort of thing uh, between different devices. But we got that working now. And you can also do custom contract calls. So you don't even have to rely on us to you know, integrate things. You can just take the API and send it straight through, and then you'll get your calls, depending on which network you're on. So to that end, we also have multi-chain support. So any EVM-style blockchain, even if we haven't got like a predefined RPC for it, you can actually just take the RPC you want and just use that instead of our default ones. So if you have like analytics on your RPC calls, you can also have uh, your own custom RPC for the normal networks, like more typical networks. Uh, we've got Wallet Connect working. And yeah, so you can use it on 
browser, mobile, and you know any kind of compile that you can have with Unity. And yeah, so the the main goal with our project is to try and make an extremely versatile tool set that you know you're not locked locked in, so to speak. So uh, we're aiming to be as decentralized as humanly possible and not like have to rely on our specific servers or those sort of things or have to use like a specific SDK. Uh, fundamentally, the, what we built now is because the tooling available in C Sharp when you compile it down in Unity wasn't really there. So that was our first stepping stone. And yeah, um, that was a short and somewhat speedy uh, initial coverage, but I think let's just dive into how you actually get started with this. So there's two main options here. You can either take the uh, uh, the code straight from GitHub, which is actually a little easier uh, due to how we have to package it for the Unity store. Um, but if I go here, so the most stri straightforward is to just come and get our latest a release from GitHub, and it's pretty easy. You just download one file, and I'm just gonna download the latest here. Sweet, yes. And yeah, I'll show you. I'll show you the one step you have to do for like using the uh, Unity Store. It's just to do with the Web3 gel, sorry, the Web gel templates that you have to actually like manually move around. But that's well, it is so to start a new project. Cool. Game jam. That should load eventually. So one of the one of the things that we've also been working on quite recently is letting people have more interactivity with uh, NFTs. So we've started building out what a sort of convenience functions for NFTs. So uh, we've been uh, integrating ways to get people's NFT balances from like the graph. So you don't actually need to know the contracts or the addresses of each NFT you want to query. Uh, prior to that, we're using multi-call. So if you want to make use of multi-call, uh, for those who don't know, that's to bundle multiple calls into one uh, sort of RPC request. And then you get uh, multiple calls back, so it's a bit more efficient. Um, the all NFTs and are broken down into two separate parts. It's all seventy one and all eleven fifty fives. And if there's a graph node for that, you can just pull it in directly. Otherwise, we use the multi call. And for now, what we've also been doing is uh, integrating our own sort of generic. NFT contract. So if you don't want to go deploy your own NFT contract or 1155 contract, we've got one that's uh, sort of generalized. So you can just use our helper functions for that to just generate your own NFTs on an existing contract. Uh, cool. So I'm going to go take that package I got here and drag it into assets. So we've got a whole bu bunch of different files here, and I'll just walk through a little bit here. So we got a bunch of prefabs just so you can test it out. Um, the underlying code of this is in the scripts, obviously. So I'll show you like one or two things on you know logging in, getting access to person's wallets, getting their address, and then we're actually going to mint an NFT with that helper function that I just described, and then. Uh, signing messages, and we are also recently, we have recently put the, the IPFS module in here. Um, I'm not aware if we have an example prefab for that yet, but uh, we'll get there. Machine. Cool. So one thing I just got to do here is change the build settings just a bit. Just for this example, I'm going to switch over to WebGL. 
uh, just a disclaimer, I'm still somewhat new to Unity, so <laughs> forgive me if I'm a, a bit slow here. Come on. Cool, so now we swapped over to the correct templates. And we'll go down to scenes. I need to grab a prefab scene here. Cool. So since I'm doing WebGL, I'm just going to grab the web login prefab scene over here. And then I'm going to take a sample scene over here. Awesome. So now that that's there, I'm just going to go grab some standard ones here. Let's go for the wallet. Balance off. So I'm just going to open the script just so you can see what the code sort of looks like. So uh, we have these network names here. So for, say, Godwoken, for example, you would put chain as Nervos, and then you put network as Godwoken, all over caps. And it's pretty much as straightforward as this. So I'm going to go back here and I'll leave that balance now. And a balance, sorry. Ah, wallet address. Okay, so we'll just dump that in there. So when it opens into our browser, we're going to see um, it popping out from the console. So there's a couple of scripts that sort of act as intermediaries between uh, WebGL and your actual, actual C sharp code. Um, so this is just sort of example debugger code. And oh Lord, I'm going to now try build and run this. <laughs> So this usually takes about five entire minutes. So let's hope it's a bit faster. Um, so one thing that we've been trying to do with how we develop all of these different features and different prefabs is it's basically just requests that come from our users in the Discord. So when, say, a network we haven't really formally integrated with yet, and what I mean by that is, created a, a standard config file for. Uh, they normally just reach out to us and then we basically just get onto their network, deploy our helper contracts, and then, yeah, then we just publish a new update. Um, if we need to do any bug hunting, it's also on the, the Unity, uh, sorry, it's also on the GitHub. Um, and our Discord's pretty active, so if you have any, issues or concerns, either our community will help you out or uh, myself or some of the, the rest of the team will jump on and, and assist. Uh, during the hack, though, you're welcome to reach out to any of us directly. Um, like we're here to sort of speed up things, which is the entire point of this. And I've only waffled for a minute and a half. Right. So <laughs> we still got a bit more time left on this. So I think whilst this is building, let me just go through our IPFS system. So we've recently integrated with one of our other products, uh, which is a pinning service for uh, you know, handling IPFS files. For those you might not know, IPFS is a decentralized sort of file storage system where the files you upload do actually need to be pinned. Um, so we've got a S3 compatible uh, storage system. And within the actual can't show you now, but we have an IPFS script in there, and you basically take your API key from here, dump it in there, and you can use that IPFS module to upload and download. So now we also have on our Minter functions a way of uploading the uh, IPFS, uh, the NFT data that will then upload to your IPFS, uh, your chain safe storage IPFS account. Uh, but you're welcome to just pull directly. You can even use a, a, your own endpoints. But for now, it's it's still relatively new, like released this week, I think. But yeah, so we're working on whatever helper functions people tend to like recommend to us. Um, 
Oh, this is taking a while. Granted, in hindsight, I should probably have had a pre-build. But is anything here? Yep. I guess we'll just have to wait for this build to carry on then. Usually takes about four and a half minutes, granted I'm video streaming at the moment. Yeah, this is not exactly thrilling now, is it? can take a walk through the actual code then. Let's just have to pop over the scripts. I'm sure the GL build will tell us when we're done. Cool, so recently we added the IPFS module, so I just need to check if this is in our latest release, but let me just show you the code here. So. It's pretty much that straightforward. We have our endpoint. Put your API key in there. You can get the actual contents. And we finally have a build. Stop waffling. Great. Just going to reload here so we see everything. Cool. So remarkable interface, I know. So we're just going to hit log in here. Ring B, cool. So now down here we see the account, and now we're properly logged into the build. So what I'm going to do now is just take some of our Minter prefabs, um, which we'll find over here. Chances Minter wallet. There we go. Cool. So this has a couple buttons in it, so I'm just going to have to build it again. It'll be a lot faster this time. Ryan, while that's loading, do you want to share a little bit about how you got involved in the Web3 space? Sure thing. So it it was an interesting one because I used to work in advertising, building apps and specifically like visual front ends. And what I then actually moved across the country. So I, I live in South Africa. And when I when I got there, it was a bit more of the same sort of style of work, doing some uh, basic content management systems. So I got the opportunity to become a instructor just to do like introduction to blockchain courses and such. And then from there, we did a bit of consulting on the back of that. And it just sort of snowballed from there. So I went to a couple of hackathons and built some interesting things, saw other people build vastly cooler things. And yeah, just been trying to get as involved as I can. Uh, did a bit of Golang just to go into the weirder parts of blockchain. So I, I was actually working on Gossamer as my first Go project, was, which was a bit complicated. And then at Chainsafe, my main focus was Chainsafe files and Chainsafe storage. So went from the whole like IPFS file decentralized systems to the gaming side. And that's where this interplay of these two products came in. But I, I still do a lot of my education stuff. So I train people to who are like total noobs at the whole coding space and blockchain. And yeah, that's sort of how I wound up here. So I think our build is done. So let's get to the, yes. Awesome. Thanks for sharing that. Oh, no worries. Yeah, I, I tend to waffle a bit, so... Uh, oh, no, that's not... Login. I believe in you. Did I reload the wrong thing? Yes. All 
Right, another beautiful UI button. So I'm just gonna go here. Now that's constructing a transaction object for us to pass back to the wallet. So here we go. And now if I, so this is just minting a generic NFT. So we have like a, a what we prefer with our NFTs is to follow the uh, metadata JSON uh, structure that you'll find on OpenSea and well, most of the marketplaces these days. Um, uh, some latent transactions. There we go. So this uh, helper function that we have and the prefab just mints with an existing CID. So if you go to IPFS and get that CID, you'll find a JSON file with the actual assets and you can put whatever you want in these. So if you have sort of game textures, you can put them in there. If you have uh, attributes, you can put them in there. So if we go check out this token, go, let's go get its URI data. Oh, did it not pop? Right, I forgot to publish the code to keep this going. But yeah, so, let me just show you what that's doing under the hood. This one, thank you. Let me go in here. And the example script, I think it's on the button. It's an idea. Like I said, this is somewhat new to me. So here we have the actual script with a couple parameters. Here is the CID. So if I take the CID, yes. Uh, sorry, it's a new machine. I forgot to add that. Yeah, I can't remember where that is. But basically, the CID links to that JSON. And let me just show you the actual script. So it's remarkably straightforward. You'll have access to this uh, Web3GL. And I'll just take this, add another one. Of course, I don't have order completing yet. But we have the standard transaction uh, shape that we get here. So we have this helper function that actually creates the transaction. Uh, but so the main issue that we're resolving now is having access to uh, the same level of crypt uh, cryptographic functions. Uh, once we have that, we can actually optimize all of these functions be a lot more fast, uh, a lot faster. But this is basically how you send transaction data. You just have what data you're signing and the other standard transaction um, parameters you would expect. We also have helper functions to get gas price and limits. And it's pretty much that straightforward. Um, obviously, this changes just a little bit for native. But um, outside of that, it's, it's all pretty simple, really. Um, What's this? And that was a lot faster than I expected. Let's go over here. Right. So I think it's probably best that we have a Q&A session, as I suspect I spoke about all that quite quickly. But you can find us at either our Discord, uh, or you can find us through the gaming website. You can just drop us a mail. You can. Uh, just reach out to us on Twitter. Uh, Discord will be the most direct. Um, that's where most of our activity is. And yeah, if you have any ideas, suggestions, if there's sort of functionality you haven't found, you can just let us know and we can work on it. Um, yeah, so I don't know where the start Q&A button is, but. Uh... Yes. So if anyone in our audience has any questions, um, you guys can either type them in the chat or I think there's an option to ask a question. So you guys can do that as well. Um, but please feel free to ask any questions. I can't, should I stop screen sharing in order to see said questions? 
Uh, sure, you can give that a try. I do see um, when name spaces. <laughs> do you see that, Ryan? <laughs> uh, so I've asked about the name spaces. Uh, we're going to look at it on Monday, I think. I'm not actually, and like I said, I'm still somewhat new to the uh, uh, Unity development space. So I can't tell you if that's complicated or not to implement, but um, we're aware of it. <laughs> It's very long password. Long password is long. Um, this is a lot more straightforward than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> OK, if anyone else has any other questions. OK, Ryan, are you able to see when they pop up? It says, ask a question. Are you able to click on that? Aha. Oh, there I, there I see it. So we initially started with WebGL just because it was the most straightforward, especially considering like how most wallets, when people are interacting with them, are usually browser-based. And when you start going into the more app side of things, you run into a lot of um, permission issues. So for example, passing information from one app i.e. your browser or game to the actual wallet. Uh, so that took a bit more time. Uh, but right now, native and WebGL should have uh, the same amount of features one for one. Uh, once we establish how to transfer requests to the wallet, that was actually the, the main uh, uh, difference between having them at the same time. And we do support any other wallets that you can uh, have access to in your browser. Um, if you're on native, you can actually, just by the means of open with, um, part, uh, just uh, select what wallet you might want uh, on your device so that if you have, say, Gnosis, you can pass it to Gnosis. If you have um, Trust Wallet or Argent, you just select that one. And we have a sort of helper screen that then will make the request to your wallet while it signs it and it passes it back to your game in, in your native. So basically to us, it's MetaMask is just the one that we have because it's the one I use. So, uh, so right now we have some of our functionality uh, going to an API. This is specifically because we haven't been able to recreate that functionality um, locally. And we are aware and have attempted to use Ethereum. But the main issue is that there are certain compiler errors that we run into when trying to use it um, at, with Unity specifically. So once we resolve that, we can then lessen or completely remove the API entirely. So the, the one thing we are uh, looking into, which has been requested, is having sort of analytics for people. Because outside of having like your own custom RPC, a lot of users want to have a, a bit more insight into how their users are interacting with their sort of more Web3 side of their game. So for now, we're trying to establish analytics on our existing architecture, but the goal is to not have the API server. <laughs> Any other questions? No. All right, well, that was rather swift. Um, um, Ryan, was there anything else that you wanted to share um, about maybe this topic, about yourself, or just anything else that you feel that people should know? Well, perhaps I can just allude to why I'm sort of focused on the gaming side of Web3. The, the one thing that I find very interesting about game development when it comes to bleeding edge technologies is you can look at the whole play to earn model and that's 
it, that's arguably pretty interesting, but it's also a novel way of designing games. And that works for some people's style of gameplay. Myself, I'm a single player gamer, I like my narratives. And what I really want to see happen from having access to Web3 is have gamer profiles that are sort of persistent and they can travel between different games. So in earlier games, you can have at one of the Metal Gear Solids, there was an enemy that would read your memory card and it would say you really enjoyed this game or that game. So they've changed their narrative based on external factors to their own game. So when you have a persistent sort of gamer profile history, you could actually make the games themselves reference your own character or player's history. So if you're playing a different game, when you come back to say a RPG sim of sorts, they could actually make mention that you spent all that day gaming. The, oh dear, a dated reference. Right, I'm just gonna open that link over there. So the, the one thing I would like to see from like a narrative perspective in Web3 is a, sort of a hyper-dynamic uh, way of storytelling within games. We've never had access to player profiles in a standard way. It's either you have access to Steam, maybe, but when your user actually connects, you can actually see what they've been doing, what they've been earning, what assets they've been getting from different games, whether they're a spellcaster or um, a complete barbarian. You can actually use that as sort of narrative uh, changes to how their character either starts or how people respond to them. So when I see that, uh, I'm going to be very excited uh, because it, you'll find these memes cropping up in games a lot, uh, whether it's uh, roguelikes playing with the concept of time that happened quite recently, or it was a whole sword axe, uh, axe side scrolling games for quite a while. The, these sort of tools become memes that generate these uh, creative ideas we call games. And yeah, that's kind of why I'm on this project. I just want to make sure I can see that happen. Okay, that's wonderful. Thank you for that. Um, so I saw that Eric was asking if there's another C Sharp Ethereum client, client library, and then it's called, he, he yeah. remembered the name Nethermind. <laughs> And then he shared the link. So if there's anyone in here that is interested in that, the link is provided in the chat by Eric. Okay. I'll definitely um, have to break through the, this repo a bit. And then I believe we will have the replay for um, Ryan's talk available to you guys after. So if you guys would like to watch this again, if you would like to watch the walkthrough, you can always come back and it will be available for you guys. So if there are no other questions, let's wait just a little bit longer. Um, well, let's but yeah, just... if, if the walkthrough isn't clear enough, you can just reach out, out to us on our Discord and we'll walk you through basically everything like completely hand in hand. Um, I can waffle a bit too quickly, but if you want to do some weird things, either our community has done it already, or we can help you figure it out. Awesome. Well, Ryan, thank you so much. This was amazing. Um, yeah, hopefully this was as informative for everyone as it was for me. And thank you so much for doing this. Oh, simply a pleasure. Uh, hope to see some cool things out of the hack. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> for sure. Okay, let's see. So I, I'll go ahead and I guess end this broadcast and then we will bring up our next speaker. So thank you everyone, stay with us. We are going to actually get straight into our next talk. Good.